Man, I feel so bad for this car. I put this car away in like October. It's been like nearly nine months. Let's see if it's still, still intact. Ooh. Yes. Wait, why did my trunk open? All right, battery is in. SMG pump has primed. Man, it's been a long time since I've been in the driver's seat of this car. A long time. Every every winter storage gets longer, dude. I feel so bad for this car. Actually, I think I have dryer sheets in the engine bay. Before I suck a dryer sheet into my engine. Yep, thank goodness I remembered. Dryer sheet there, dryer sheet there. That's to keep the rodents away. Everyone always asks me. I think that's it. So I'm gonna do a couple prime cranks to uh, get the oil semi going. Oh, all right, never mind. it's just starting. Starts right up. After eight long months of sitting, oh, there might be stuff in the exhaust actually. Yep, I put uh, whatever this is in the exhaust so it doesn't, no rodents go in there. Sounds good, sounds happy. So I'm gonna let this warm up a little bit, get this back to the house, and then we have some uh, new goodies for it that we have to test fit. You can guess what I mean by that. This is awfully deja vu of the past few years because it seems like we pull this car out of storage and have new wheels for it, which, you know, isn't always a bad thing. So I'll explain that in a minute. The E46 has officially arrived at the house, meeting the blue E34 for the first time, the silver E36 for the first time, so, we got some new wheels for this thing. I'm excited to show you guys. So instead of just talking about them and throwing them, showing them on the floor, let's just throw them on a test fit. Now I will say they're on really stretched tires because they were on an E36, so those will be going, but this is just to get an initial impression. Not too bad. It's really hard to get a proper look at how these are gonna look with these ridiculous stretch tires because these were fit on an E36, so like it really throws off the whole look of the car, but imagine Bigger tires, obviously, fitted tires, meatier fitment. And I think this is a I think this is a winner right here, actually. I was honestly very unsure about these wheels. I really didn't know if I would like them or not. But I actually these actually really grew on me since I've seen them on the car. I think the silver on slow is really nice. The triple chrome HREs were just a little bit too much. And the look of the HREs, the five spoke, is just more of a 90s-ish style wheel. Obviously, as you see all these cars with five spokes. Uh, the E46, they just looked a tad bit dated. I still liked them, but I don't know. I didn't really, it was either, it was either new wheels for this or new wheels for this. The HREs uh, are the perfect spec for this car, a little aggressive for that. So I figured why not do a little switcheroo here, give the E34 the HREs. I think the triple chrome five spoke on the light blue will actually look really good. And then facelift the E46, updated wheels, more modern design of a wheel. So. I really like these. I'm gonna go ahead and order myself some tires. I think I know what tire sizes I need to get this where I want it. Ride height wise, it'll probably stay the same, maybe a little bit lower, uh, cause I'm going to a 35 sidewall instead of a 40. Much better. Now we got some bigger tires on these things to look more proper, ready for the E46. Shout out as always to my guy over at Gap Auto Clinic. Eric hooks me up every time. Always takes care of my nice wheels. The only guy I trust with my stuff, I bring him all my nice three-piece stuff. So if you're local to me, Gap Auto Clinic, they will take care of you, undoubtedly. He got me some new tires next day. So these are, for the fronts, we're running uh, the Kumho Exta, Exta um, 245-35s on a 9.5. And then the rears, I had these Achilles ATRs in a 255-35. Actually, from that car, when I used to have the M Parallels, I ran them for just a season, so they're like new. It wouldn't be Josh if it wasn't two different tires on the car. Yes, I would love to have my 46 on a complete set, but I didn't, you know, I'm a cheapskate these days. When you have to put tires on, you know, five cars, it gets kind of expensive, so I'm more keen to reusing what I have. The uh, sizes are about perfect. They both fit pretty much the same. Same like minor stretch, I would say. I mean, the lips hang out a little bit, but 
nothing crazy. So these should fit. The front's no problem. The rears, I'm a little bit worried because when I test fit them, the lips sit uh, kind of aggressive and the tire's not very stretched. That's kind of high. I'm used to running a 40 sidewall in the front. These are actually pretty small. I have to lower this thing a little bit. All right, now let's do what I'm actually scared of. Let's get to the rear. I think we might actually be all right in the rear. Ooh. Oh, it's perfect. It is perfect. Thank God. I actually have a decent amount of room. I could put a five mil in here. I might have to, I might have to do that actually. Or I could go lower. I don't know, now it's the big debate. I lower this car all around? Yeah, probably. I had it like this height because it fit with the TEs which had wider tires. And then with the HREs, the rear had a super aggressive offset. So I had to stretch the tire. I only had 235s on the rear. Of an M3, that's kind of stupid. So that's why I really didn't like it because from the back it looked goofy, but I kept it high because the lip poked out and if I hit a big bump, it would have smacked my quarter. This looks like it would probably rebound in and I have stiff springs so I could probably go lower. All right, so full image, it's kind of crappy because the split lighting, but we're gonna go down a little bit. Not too much, but I'd say maybe a quarter inch front, quarter inch back. I have tons of room to play with back here. Like, we're, we're pretty solid. I think I could go lower and I don't think I'll have to worry about my lip smacking my quarter. So I think that's gotta go down. And then the front, like I said, I, I cannot have top of the tire showing. I gotta bring this down a little bit, so. Wow, you guys are actually gonna get to see me do modifications to my E46. I have not messed with this car in so many years. It's been dialed for so long, but it's, uh. It's time, and since we're actually working, it's time for the suit. Get the jack under the shock. We gotta drop the rear shock bolt. But before we do that, we gotta loosen the locking collar before we forget, because we're gonna have to adjust the preload to match the ride height. So that's what the shock is there for. All right, now we can lower the, the arm, we gotta get the e-brake off because it's gonna hang it up. You can adjust these in the car, but mine are kind of low. So I'm going to pull it out. So there's our four inch swift spring that I have in the rear of this car. Here's our collar. So this is obviously your ride height. And actually, we only have, we don't have much room to go down. So, we're going to probably nearly max out this adjuster here. And that's probably going to be the height we want. So, we got to untwist this. Spread it down. I'm going to spin this down to match. Just like that. I'll do one hammer for good measure. I'm going to jack it up and see how it matches with this thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna jack it up until obviously the hub hits the shock, and then we're gonna see how loose the spring is. For the preload, we want the spring to be uh, firm, not able to jump up and down, but you don't want to compress it too much. See how the spring is firm, but still moves around kind of easily. So we're gonna want to preload this a little bit more. So I'm gonna spin the shock up, meaning shorten it, and that'll make the preload a little more aggressive. Probably about that, that's probably all I really want. And now, we just match the shock to the hub. You see how the shock's a little bit lower than the hub? Now we just want to spin the shock 
until it meets, meets. You really want to make sure that that's matched evenly, otherwise you will cross thread the bolt and it will be a bad day. Lower bolt for the shot should go in all the way by hand. If it doesn't, then you do not have it lined up properly. Now we're gonna go around, do the other side. We'll do that off camera really quick, and then we'll lower it and see how the fitment is. All right, I'm gonna back off the wood and see. I don't know man, this is pretty good. The fitment is perfect. Might be hard to see, but we have space between the tire, nothing rubs. From the looks of things, if we hit a big bump, this lip will go into the quarter. Uh, it looks like it's just that perfect offset where when the car hits a bump, it'll camber and it'll go in. I don't think we're gonna have to worry about any uh, lip to quarter panel damage here. I feel like it's deceiving. It seems low, but it's a pretty skinny profile tire. We're really only halfway down, if even that. I, I'd say we're probably right about where I wanted it, probably only a quarter inch lower. I mean, it's gotta be a quarter inch lower. I showed you on the shock body, or on the, the adjuster tube, really not that much room for adjustment on it. I mean, we only went down probably a quarter inch, if that, so. We really shouldn't have any issues. The fitment is perfect. I don't think we have any issues here. So I think what I'm gonna do is move on to the front and uh, match the front to the rear. Obviously not that low, because we have to turn and see. If, if it looks too dumped in the rear, I'll maybe go up in the back, but I really hate adjusting the rear suspension. It's not that easy compared to the fronts, just because you have to undo the shock and stuff. So I'm actually pleased with it. Aesthetically, I'm totally pleased. It's just a matter of performance. If it, if it uh, rubs or anything like that, I will not drive it if that's the case. But I think we're gonna be all right. And I think that looks really sick. I'm actually pretty stoked about this. The fronts, I'm just gonna do side by side because front's way easier. Jack it up, twist. You don't have to unbolt anything. Fronts are way nicer. So I'm gonna dial this side in and then I'm just gonna match the other side. And my collar's loose, look at that. All right, good thing I did all this. A little bolt check on this car. I guess we're a little overdue. So I want to go up about a quarter of an inch, or down a quarter of an inch. So we're probably going to get her to about there. That's probably where we want to be. Uh, these threads are dirty, so I'm going to clean those out really quick. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time threading these up. Oh, this is loose too. Wow. This way. See if I like it. First try. Ah, oh, nah, see we barely went down. I forgot these fronts are a lot less sensitive than the rear to uh, adjustment. You have to go way more than you think you do in the front. That's a rookie mistake on my part. Let's see. Ooh, that's pretty good. We can maybe go down a tad. I'm gonna turn the car on and turn the wheel and see how much clearance we have and that's what we'll decide. I think I'm gonna call it there on the front because that is pretty aggressive. There's not much room there so if I'm driving and I hit a corner hard I don't want to buckle out my fender so I think I'm gonna leave that fitment where it's at. I actually really like that. Nice and aggressive but still functional. So while we have the car up and I'm gonna adjust the front suspension to raise it a little bit, in the meantime, we are also going to do an oil change because I shamefully will admit that last year I never even changed the oil on this thing. I uh, never got around to it. I changed the oil right before I put it away for storage and then I hardly put any miles on it. Never got around to it. So we got some Liquid Molly 10W60 here. A lot of people swear by this stuff for the S54s. I've actually never used it. This is my first time using it. I always stuck with the uh, 
original like TWS Castrol 10W60 that these cars were like used with from like the brand new. They went through a couple formulation changes, different name, but they were using like Audi R8, so I'd go to the Audi dealership and get them for cheap. But uh, I always stuck with that, but I realized that this stuff's actually cheaper. That oil went like way through the, pr uh, the roof on the price, and then they actually discontinued it. So now I don't even know what that oil turned into, but a lot of people use this and they say good things about it, so we're just gonna go ahead and use this. Made in Germany, you can't go wrong with it. Mile A, mile whatever, filter. So let's go change the oil on this poor S54 that's been neglected. I, I could not get myself to drive this car an, a single more mile without changing the oil. I'm probably the only guy with a non-Allen key drain plug on this car. Because funny story, when I did the first oil change when I first got it, I didn't work on cars very much and I stripped the drain plug in there. I had to get it towed and uh, extracted. And they said, all right, we put a 17 millimeter hex head in there so you don't have to worry about that. So I don't have the original drain plug anymore. The hex works good, but a little funny story there from when I was more naive when it came to working on cars. E46 has got all these freaking skid plates. You can't see nothing that's going on underneath your engine. Oh yeah, that's some nice dark looking oil right there. No, nah, it's not too bad. I mean, this oil realistically only has like 500 miles on it, but it's got over a year on it, which is, is a no-no for these cars, so. I feel pretty bad about that. All right, coilovers are adjusted, oil's drained. Now let's get this filter out. Unplug TPS. All right, it's still dripping a lot of oil. Whatever, let's send it. Ah, it didn't do very good. I'm gonna use my Odelphi spotlight to look in here. Link in the description if you want one, 10% off, Josh E34. Uh, looks good in there, the residual oil. I think I'm gonna wipe this up with a microfiber and get this clean. I usually like to completely wipe out the housing on this car, because I'm very OCD about this S54, and these have gotten pretty expensive, so you really don't want to mess around with these engines. You want them to be uh, happy and healthy. Clean microfiber. Totally clean, no oil. We're starting fresh, no contaminants. That's how I like it. Now, we gotta do the traditional, I filmed this many times, O-ring, O-ring, crush washer, put back in the plug, and then we'll fill it. I don't wanna bore you guys with that, we've done it plenty of times. As always, prime the oil filter housing. Okay, 5.5 liters, so. All of this and then half of this, so that's, that's pretty easy to, to remember. I think we nailed the front. Just got that little bit of extra clearance we need. I'm going to turn the car back on after I check the oil and turn the wheels full lock and make sure that it clears. But otherwise I think that we nailed the front there. So let me check this oil level real quick. The only time I use an OBD2 reader, engine oil reset. So that means the engine oil thingy on here that turns on when you uh, start it will be reset. Service is resetting, please wait. End of service function. All right, I guess that's good. Let's see, does this tell us? No. I guess it's only when you start the car. But anyway, not really important to me, but I'll do it anyway. Just got back from a nice little drive, beating on it, and we are good to go. No rubbing anywhere, fully functional, no issues. It is officially dialed in, fresh oil, so I didn't feel bad driving it. This car came out better than I could ever imagine. I absolutely love these wheels on this car. Shout out to Jeremy for meeting me in Cleveland with these wheels all the way from Pennsylvania so that they could go to me because I'm a good home, apparently. But I am. I take good care of my wheels and my cars and stuff. So thanks to him. I am stoked. Again, shout out to Gap Auto Clinic, mounting my tires, always taking care of me on my nice wheels. Only guy I trust with my stuff. Yeah, here we have it. Let me know what you guys think about the E46 M3. Finally out for the season. We can finally start making some content with this car. 
It's been way too long of a winter storage. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.